what up everybody welcome back to the channel if you're new here thanks for tuning in it is another chilly day here on the farm probably going to be saying that in every video for the next six months uh, but we got a little bit of a different video for you guys different than the normal that i put out as you guys might be able to tell by the title of the video i got a product review coming your way some of you guys might remember that over this last summer i picked up this enclosed trailer and I told you that I had plans to turn it into somewhat of an off-grid hunting camping trailer. Um, that is exactly what I did. It was a very basic budget, um, kind of quick and dirty, get it done and make it functional type of thing. Um, so I didn't record it for you guys. Honestly, I didn't have really time to record it. I was doing uh, the last minute touches on it, doing wiring on it, uh, literally the night before leaving for hunting. Uh, so it was kind of a, a rush, a whirlwind to get it done. Uh, but that is what happened to this trailer took it out hunting this year and it worked great uh, did exactly what i wanted it to do uh, for those of you that may not know i am in a wheelchair and so the reason for this trailer is being in a wheelchair using a conventional tent doesn't really work very well so having a nice enclosed trailer is really really handy some may say it is a little bougie and over the top but uh I gotta admit, it is very, very nice. Literally pull into camp and your tent and whole sleeping home setup is already set up. And when you're ready to go, put everything back in the trailer and you are packed up and good to go. Um, if you haven't considered going this route as far as a hunting or camping setup, uh, I would definitely consider it. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about something inside of it that I am so so happy that i put into it let's go in the trailer and i'll show you what i'm talking about all right so here in the trailer sorry if it's a little echoey um, i'll uh, try to keep the tone down a little bit see if i can reduce that but let me give you one of those uh, mtv let me show you my crib tours of this uh tiny little trailer um so for those of you that are curious this is a six by ten trailer so it's pretty tight in here uh, but totally functional all right, so we are at the back of the trailer looking at the front. We got some cabinets up front. I got the battery storage down there. And then I ended up building this bed that folds up nicely against the wall. I'll fold that down so you guys can see it. But this is uh, just about it. We got some details here at the front. Got the, got the whole command station all wired in up here. So now I got the battery down below. Um, it all feeds up into this power inverter with a power strip running up to there. Um, I got the battery monitor right here. Um, I can do a whole video into all this stuff if you guys are curious, but I won't go into the main details on that right now. Show you guys the bed. Like I said, it folds down nicely. We got this latch to hold it up in place for travel and then put it on some hydraulic struts now this is a full-size twin bed which is plenty um, honestly it doesn't really need to be this big but I like having some room to roll over, roll around. It's on hydraulic struts, so literally all you have to do, pull it down, and of course, it's sitting on the, <laughs> the spare tire down there, but you guys can see, drops down, gives you space to walk along there, and you got space up here to move around if you need to. Very, very simple, nothing fancy. Um, like I said, this is a, a bare bones hunting trailer, at least this year. I'd love to deck this out a little bit more, uh, but for this year, it was all about functionality. And then as far as just lifting it up, push it up and the struts put it right in place. Really, really nice. So although I, when I knew that I was building this trailer, it's going to be pretty bare bones, especially this first year, I knew I wanted one thing in particular, and that was a way to heat the trailer. Uh, two or three years ago, we were out hunting and the temperature was dropping down into the teens at night, which I know isn't crazy cold, um, but having a nice warm enclosed area that you can be 
outside all day getting cold and then at night you can come into a nice warm area is very very nice and that's one of the perks of these enclosed trailers is you can seal them up pretty darn tight and if you have a way to heat it you can keep it pretty darn comfortable um, and that is a lifesaver most of the ways that i was looking at this trailer were different various different propane heaters um, and those can range from like the misty buddy heaters that are under 100 bucks that work well um, all the way up to like wall mounted heaters that are pretty high-end heaters uh, the biggest thing about all of that stuff is you're running propane inside an enclosed area um, which if you're doing it inside a large house not the biggest of details you got to be cautious of it but if you're doing it inside a little tiny trailer like this um, becomes much much more of a concern on uh, carbon monoxide and killing yourself in the middle of the night um, it's just something you got to be very very cautious of and so propane heaters there were some very budget options that would work well and i knew would heat this trailer well it's just one of the reasons i didn't really want to go with that solution i wanted to find a good heater that would uh, suck in outside air and vent outside so i didn't have to worry about any of that um, and when you start looking into that market there are some very very expensive options out there now some of you guys may be aware of these heaters some of you guys may not um, it's probably in the title of this video uh, but i was looking at one of those vev or diesel heaters now it's an off-brand chinese kind of replica heater i think of an, a german brand i'm not positive but uh, a chinese diesel heater um, they seem to have some pretty darn re good reviews online and they're like 140 150 bucks somewhere around in there a very very budget friendly option but being with that i always had the concern of how good would one of these things actually work i didn't really know um it just so happened i didn't reach out to vever nothing like that um i was looking at their product and they just happened to email saying hey would you be interested in trying any of our products and immediately i was like absolutely I want to try one of your guys' diesel heaters. So they did send out this uh, diesel heater for me to try. Um, I told them, if you guys send this to me, I'm going to give a 100% honest review on this product. And they said, that's totally fine. So here it is. I will give you guys my 100% honest review on this heater that they sent out. Let me show it to you guys. So you guys might have noticed this when I was doing the, uh, the crib tour here. But like I said, I got the battery bank there. And right here in the middle of the trailer, front middle of the trailer, we got this Vevor diesel heater uh, mounted up and functioning. Um, as you guys can see, it's a pretty low profile. The one that I got is an all-in-one unit. So it's uh, all the control panels are in there. The fuel tank is in there and the heater is in there. Everything is there other than that power cord running to the 12 volt battery. These are 12 volt diesel heaters. Um, you guys can kind of see the fill up is back there fuel tank levels are there you can kind of tell there you can see still got some diesel in there um, it is an all enclosed unit which is something that i really wanted as far as venting and everything goes i'm not sure how well you guys will be able to see this but down underneath it basically dead center underneath the trailer we put a hole or two holes down below one is an exhaust that goes out and out the trailer that way one is an intake that goes down and out the trailer that way both of them kind of wrapped towards the back so they don't suck in air or catch moisture off the road while you're driving like i said the reason i was very interested in one of these heaters is obviously it's budget friendly but both the intake and the exhaust are outside the trailer so you don't have to worry about the carbon monoxide getting into the trailer, um, possibly killing you and anybody else that's inside. Or you don't have to worry about having vents or doors or windows open when you're trying to heat a trailer because it's kind of counterproductive. Um, so that's one of the reasons I was very, very interested in this um, and very interested in trying one of these heaters. So as far as install goes, like I said, you got the two holes for the vent down below. You can either do, I've seen people do one big hole and put them both out there. Um, I ended up doing two separate holes um, and venting uh, both of them separately. And then as far as the rest of the install goes, literally you have some mounting screws in the front, mounting screws in the back and hook it up to a 12 volt source and put some diesel in it. That is literally all it takes to put one of these heaters in. Honestly, it was 
took a little bit of time to figure out where I wanted to put it. But once I did, it was maybe 20, 30 minutes max to get this thing installed up and running and functioning. Um, so if you guys are looking for a very easy option, um, this is definitely a great option out there. How I use this heater was at night, I would come in ready for bed, I would turn the heater on and I would run it until I got the trailer up to temperature or up to the temperature I wanted in here. A nice cozy 70 to 75 degrees, which was absolutely awesome. And it worked great for doing that. When I would go to bed, I would turn the heater off. As the temperature dropped at night, I would be in my sleeping bag, so it didn't really matter. And then when I woke up in the morning, I could go onto my phone, go to the app and turn the heater on without even getting out of my sleeping bag, turn the heater on, run it for five or so minutes, and then when the trailer was nice and warm again, I could get out of my sleeping bag and get dressed, get ready for the day hunting. Um, it was super, super nice. Uh, this thing worked so much better than I expected. It was awesome. All right, so this thing came with a little remote that I think their standard model comes from. It is uh, a simple on and off and then up and down for temperature. Um, I never use this. I use the app on my phone, which I'll show you guys here. So it runs off of Bluetooth. I'm going to uh, record my screen for you guys so you guys can see how it works on the phone. All right, so here we got the app down in the bottom right corner. We'll click on that there. And then you can see this is kind of the standby screen. And what you're going to do is push and hold that bottom power button. Start heating. And you'll hear the heater say, start heating. And it's going to go through a warm up process. It's not immediate on, as you can expect with most diesel things. Um, it's got a warm up cycle. Um, you can see the temperature here in Celsius. I never figured out how to switch the temperature on this screen from Celsius to Fahrenheit but you can see your battery voltage there on the left and then power levels throughout the whole thing. So we're gonna sit here and give it a minute to uh, start to warm up and kick on and you guys will be able to kind of hear the ignition and how, much, how uh, loud or not loud it is while it's running. That is the fuel pump kicking on, that clicking is pumping fuel. Now you'll feel the turbine in it start to spool up. As it's starting to pick up combustion, starting to push a little more fuel. This is still all part of the warm up cycle. Grab the thermometer here. We got our temperature down here at the outlet. Right now it's showing 70 degrees, 71 degrees. So it's warming up, warming up near the top of its warm up cycle. And here pretty soon you guys are gonna hear it kick down to its low level because that's what I have it set at. Right now the outlet is showing 92 degrees coming out of there. Nice warm air. And there you go. Now you hear it kick back down. It's going to slow down to its uh, lowest setting because that's what I have it set at right now. And the air coming out is showing 105 degrees right now. And here it is at its low setting. Um, so this is basically what I kept it at full time um, when I was running it. I didn't, in such a small space, I didn't need it to be much more than this. Um, right now it is 117 degrees on the output of air coming out of there. But if we go to the app and turn it up, kind of turn up to mid power there. You can see here on the screen, it reflects the change there. Fuel pump kicks up, the fan kicks up. And 
and then we'll pump it up to its highest setting. And then you can see that, or here, that on its highest setting, it's pretty noisy. I mean, any heater for the most part on its highest setting is pretty noisy. You're not gonna really wanna keep it on this for very long, but at the same time with this place sealed up, you're not gonna wanna keep it at the highest setting very long either because you're gonna cook yourself out. Um, so I'm gonna turn it back down. Actually, here, one sec. I think a lot of you guys might be interested in how much power this thing draws on its highest setting versus its lowest setting. So let me show you guys that. So here in the command center, you guys can see here on the bottom right of the screen there, I'll try to get it where you guys can see, it is drawing 40, 42 to 45 watts, um, so 3.6 amps. And then if I go back into the amp and turn it all the way down, on its lowest setting there, hear it ramping down. I know this is probably a little difficult to see. It's still going down. On its lowest setting, it is drawing nine, about nine to 11 amps, or sorry, nine to 11 watts. So as far as power consumption goes, this thing on a low setting draws very, very little power. Um, when I was running this while I was hunting, my cell phone, when I was charging it, drew more power to charge my cell phone than it did to run this heater, um, which is one thing I was really, really uh, curious about is how much power this thing actually draws because I don't have a huge power system in this, just a simple standard uh, blue top car battery, um, Optima blue top, uh, nothing crazy in this trailer. So I didn't know how long I could actually run this thing for um, on this trailer system. And I can say without a doubt that this thing draws very, very little power. Of course, the other component to the system is the diesel consumption. Uh, again, like I said, for the most part, I ran this heater on low the entire hunting trip. Um, I might have bumped it up here and there at night to warm up things a little bit quicker, um, but I was on the trip for nine or 10 days, running this in the morning and the night, probably averaged an hour or two of runtime every single day and I burned through maybe one gallon of diesel. So you guys can kind of calculate that if you were to run it 24 seven, obviously it would burn more diesel. Uh, but as far as like average typical in and out consumption goes that I was using it for over the course of a week and a half, I went through at most one gallon of diesel, but I don't think I even hit that. So what are my final overall thoughts on this little diesel heater? Uh, I would say for the price, again, the one I got is 140, has the Bluetooth, has the controller, has the control unit, everything's built into its own package. For the price, I don't think you could beat it. These things are pretty sweet. Now, of course, I don't know of or how they're gonna do longevity wise. I've only had this for its first season, uh, but as far as first impressions goes, this thing did great, um, absolutely awesome. Now, obviously I'm using it for this application of using it in a little camp trailer. I think this little camp trailer is honestly maybe a little small uh, for this unit. This thing could heat a lot more than this little trailer, uh, but I can honestly think of a lot more applications for something like this. Say you have a greenhouse um, and you live somewhere where it gets pretty darn cold or you got a cold spell coming in, this would be a great option to 
uh, set buy one of these things, set it up and run it in your greenhouse or vent duct it into your greenhouse to pump warm air into your greenhouse so all your plants don't die in the middle of winter. And this thing would be way more efficient than trying to run an electric heater inside your uh, greenhouse. Or maybe you got like a pump house or something. You got, you're like me, you live out in the country. You got a pump house uh, that's not heated and you got some pipes in there and you want to make sure it doesn't freeze. Again, something like this would work phenomenal. Um, obviously, it's more expensive than some space heaters, but I've seen space heaters go for more than this thing's worth. Um, and as far as power consumption goes, you're going to be drawing almost nothing compared to what one of those little electric space heaters would run. Overall, I think it's a great emergency heater um, or a great mobile camp heater. You could bring it camping and duct it into your tent if you wanted to. Honestly, the sky's the limit as far as your guys' imagination and how you guys could use this. Do I think it's worth the price? As of right now, I totally do. Um, they're not paying me to give a good review. This is my 100% honest review. The interface on it is a little screwy. You can tell it's a Chinese heater. A um, little tricky to figure out if you're really trying to go into the interface and change settings on it. it took me a little while to figure out how to change the uh, display uh, clock and uh, thermometer on it. Uh, from Celsius to Fahrenheit on the actual unit itself. At this point, I don't really care about doing it because when I park the trailer, I unhook the battery so there's no drain on anything um, and it resets everything anyways. It doesn't really change a whole lot to me. I just say it's either on low, medium, high or any of those settings in between. Um, I don't worry too much about the temperature. I just go off feel. Um, so yeah, the interface of it is a little screwy, not the best but that's kind of what I would expect. So I'm not really concerned about that. For the price and for the functionality, I think this thing is a great option if you're looking for a budget heater uh, for something like this, or one of those other projects. To the people at Over at Ever, thank you for giving me the opportunity to try this out. Cause honestly, if you guys hadn't have sent it, I probably wouldn't have bought it. Um, I would have just uh, figured out a different solution or maybe just toughed it out and been cold. Uh, so I really appreciate you guys uh, trusting the channel for me to do a review on this. Um, so far, it's been a great product for me. Um, I know this is kind of my uh, not the ordinary video that I do for you guys. So if you guys made it this far in the video, um, I appreciate it. Um, I will include a link to this product down below. Um, and then there's a discount that I will put on the screen here that you can also use. I think it's 5% off, uh, but I'll put that on the screen here so you guys can see it, give you guys a little bit of a discount. Um, maybe you get this as a Christmas present for somebody or maybe you get it for yourself for Christmas. I don't know. Um, it's a good time of year to be buying one of these things. It's nice and cold. But I think that is all I have to say on this thing. I appreciate you guys watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one.